sometimes in life you have to give credit where credit is due. And uh, I got to give credit to Dion. We've been talking about helping people down the financial freedom path for, gosh, three, four years now. Something he has always brought up that I did not understand until the last month was Zuber. There is a step zero. There is a foundation and you're missing it. You know what? He's right. He's absolutely right. So I wanted to do a video where we give all the kudos uh, and flowers to Dion and we can start talking about what that step zero is. Step zero is important because not everybody needs it, but a lot of people do. So Dion, let's wrap. Let's talk. Well, thanks for this, Mike. I'm excited about this because I have in, uh, uh, six steps to reaching financial freedom. And in my mind, five of those steps happen before you buy a rental. I like it. That's how much of my steps are step zero. That so many people think I'm going to buy rentals and I'm going to invest one day. Mm -hmm. Flip that and start investing day one. Yes. You can't just go out and buy a rental. You need a down payment. Yep. You need closing costs. You need money for immediate repairs. You need a good credit score. You need the habits of saving, of increasing your income. There's all of these things. We can be investing for years before we buy a rental. Uh, yeah, I, this is this is the aha moment I had is for a lot of people, there are these things and they are moving forward. They are investing. You're absolutely right. So what what are some of those uh, some of those examples? So the first thing that I think someone's doing watching this video, they're investing time, yes, educating themselves to a way of thinking about money that is kind of contrarian to the way most people do. Mm -hmm. Right now, the majority of people, it's eighty plus percent of people, think it's a bad time to buy a house. Yeah, I mean they've seen a lot of crash videos, a lot <laughs> of crash bro info coming in telling them that. And think about this, Mike. Uh, maybe maybe you might have data that I don't have. We've been alive a half a century. Mm -hmm. Have we ever seen a year where in that year, everyone was saying now is the best time to buy real estate? No, it's, it's funny. I've been doing this for so long and I bought in the best year. 2010 was the best year to buy real estate, my opinion. And um, I think it was over 70%. I would have to go back and look. Yahoo Finance does this does the survey. I'm sure we can go back and find it. But well over 70% of the people said it was a bad time to buy in 2010. What are and you there thinking? Were, there were two major reasons. One, lenders disappeared. Exactly. It was an asset class. And then every narrative was double dip recession. Watch well, the, out. Yeah, Next I step's coming. These people thought property is going to go to zero. I mean, it's it's it was wild to think about. Yeah, it's crazy. So educating yourself, that's the first investment. F figuring, okay, the, you, you you have two financial lives. And the second one starts the, the day you realize you only have one financial life. And we wake up and think, okay, I have to take charge of my finances. So good job being here watching this video, educating yourself. That's the first investment. The second investment when it comes to investing is you need to have money to invest. Yes, well, there are strategies I, I, to invest with no money or low money down, but how do yeah, you make want, more money? Go Go back to number one, because I think there's a subtle thing that we have to acknowledge. You have to be, you have to invest your time with people that are taking you forward. I think there's a lot of people, we we joke about crash bros because they've been wrong for 12 years and they'll be wrong for the next 12, in my opinion. Um, but you also got to cut out people that are taking you in the wrong direction. I can't tell you how many people say, Zuber, I watch your stuff. I watch Dion. I watch Matt. I watch Mike. But I also watch so-and-so crash bro. Folks, if you take a drop of oil and put it in drinking water, you don't want to drink it, right? It's not good for you. And I know you're telling yourself it's balanced. I I don't mind counterpoints, but at this point, crash bros are lying. They are making stuff up. A crash bro in the last 48 hours said this. 44% of homes have been bought by Wall Street. That is not even in the realm of possibilities. The Last I heard, you, it was 1.6%. Yeah, it's sub 2%. 44% of homes have been bought by Wall Street. How about an asinine thing to say? And it got millions of views. Millions of views. A bold face lie. Crazy.
I don't have the best memory. It's either rule five or rule seven in the ORAP rules, but seven. you have to audit your network. Seven, audit your right. network. To the point where I'm not saying eliminate certain people from your life, but there are people no. in my life who I can't. I am. <laughs> there are people in my life who I can't talk finances with. Exactly. Uh, it's just, it's not productive. It doesn't mean, and there are other people that we eliminate from our lives for all kinds of reasons. But when it comes to finances, there are some people you just don't talk to them about. It. Yeah. And then definitely auditing your your feed of what's coming in. Right. I, I get fear porn gets a lot of clicks, but that hits your subconscious. Oh yeah. 44% of Wall Street, 44% of homes have been bought by Wall Street. A million views. It was Bruce Lee that said, be careful of the words you listen to. Words have power. That's why they call it spelling. Yeah. 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 There you go. Uh, Sorry, I digress. It. Keep going. Keep going. So that was the, the the first thing is, you know, get your information, educate yourself from the right sources. And and, and here's the, the next step with the crash bros is you've know, been wrong for 12 years. If they're going to be wrong for the next 12 years or right for the next 12 years, remember a crash doesn't matter for a buy and hold investor. Right? We're not buying for appreciation. We're buying for cash flow and rents go up. Right. Yes. So that's yes. the first thing. Educate yourself. The next thing is your income, your job. How are you increasing that? Yep. Is it over time? Is it learning a skill to be more attractive to your employer to get a raise or a promotion? Is it changing companies? Is it developing a side hustle? Is it long before you have the money to even start thinking, what market am I going to invest in? What house hack strategy am I going to use? We could be thinking, how do I get the dry tender, the capital to make these investments. So that that happens way before you make an investing move. Totally agree. Yeah. This the the next step, which is again still in step zero, and you can do these ones at the same time. You can be watching content. You can be learning how to increase your income. When you increase income, we talked about this in our other video about habits. Is don't let life creep. Follow your increased income. Exactly for five years, not forever, just for now, for about five years. And then after 10 years, you can start having the problem that I do now. <laughs> I have to learn how to spend. Yeah. Right. I, I had five years where I was broke every day, no matter how much I made, because whatever I made above what it took me to live was invested. So I was always right at zero income, really, mentally. So now that I don't have to save and invest, I've had to create what I call reverse budgets. Mm. I require myself to spend $2,000 a month eating out, period. I won't live frugally. That wasn't my goal. I have a, a vehicle budget. I have to force myself to not live a frugal life because those habits that we built for those five years of, of to reach financial freedom, yep. what got us here isn't what's going to keep us here. Yeah. What's going like to keep it. us here is living a life that we wanted to. Mm -hmm. So don't allow life creep to kick in. That's part of step zero. Part of step zero is also educating yourself on your credit score. Yeah. What things can you be doing to increase your credit so that when you do get to a point where you go to make a move, even with a DSCR loan, where they don't look at your debt to income ratio, your work history, your salary, they look at your credit score. Yeah. So for the Dave Ramsey fans, where he says you don't want a credit score because that just tricks you into getting into debt. Mm -hmm. Disagree. It gets you into better debt. So what things can you be doing now? Don't cancel old credit cards because that removes the longevity of that card on your record. Mm -hmm. Don't spend more than 10% of your credit utilization. If you have a credit card with a $1,000 limit, don't spend more than $100 on it. Pay it off constantly. Call your creditor and ask for your limit to be raised to 5,000, but don't spend more than 500. Don't spend more than 10% to keep that score higher. There's there's a lot of strategies and I, I recommend looking up like Graham Stephan from 2017 and 18. Yep. Not the newer, very entertaining stuff that he's doing now, but his original core videos had a lot of strategies on how to increase your credit. Again, long before, this has to happen before you're investing because Absolutely. it opens up more options when you do get to the point to take step one. Perfect. Cool. And this again is really important, folks. We do have a step zero, a foundation it's not for every, some of you are already passed it. Hence, you can get on the three steps. Again, uh, creating disposable income, becoming elite, and doing it for 10 years. A day job is something most of us have. You don't have to have it forever. I think it takes eight to 10 years 
if you do the work, you have the sacrifice, you make the decisions, you don't have to do it forever. And then you can ball out like Dion and get a vet and a truck and a compensator and all this other fun stuff and tell yourself to spend two grand a month eating out. Uh, it's a life we would all really, really enjoy. Dion, where can people find you? You can find me right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom, where I do live streams every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And the last thing I'll say about step zero is it's repeated. Yes. We don't do step uh, zero, get to step one, and then move on. Between step one and two, between the first rental and the second rental, you do step one again. How do you increase your income? How do you reduce your expenses? How do you keep your credit score good? You keep doing that until you're financially free. And then most of that will never matter again. With that, folks, we'll leave it right there. Dion, you're amazing. Thank you, sir.